Yo guys, Punk out another video. So just a little disclaimer before we start on this one that this video is actually for the Hunter class specifically, but I think it's pretty interesting in general and it shows the potential of what they can do out in the real world and sometimes in dungeons as well. So if you're interested in general about class mechanics and to really see where Hunters thrive in vanilla, I think this video is gonna be pretty interesting for you nonetheless. So you read the title and the title states how to solo rare elites or elite mobs, I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna title the video, but something around that as a hunter. And I don't just mean normal elites, because I mean a normal elite, most classes can solo. I'm talking about the ones that are almost like mini bosses out in the world or named quest elites that take maybe three or four people to kill. And as a hunter, you can pretty much have this sort of slow boil strategy to kill it eventually with time. So let's actually go over the hunter's toolkit and specifically the abilities that are core to kiting as a hunter. Now the first one is obviously Aspect of the Cheetah. Aspect of the Cheetah, if you aren't already aware, increases the hunter's movement speed by 30% flat. Um, and you can also get a beast mastery talent called Pathfinding, I believe it's called, that increases it actually to 36%. So that's actually a pretty significant movement speed increase. It's pretty much close to uh, Druid Travel Form. Now. The reason why this is really important is just obviously the movement speed differential. And oh, before we actually go into it, let's just mention that you can't get hit when you have Aspect of the Cheetah. If you get hit when you have Aspect of the Cheetah applied onto your character, you're actually going to get dazed. So the idea is to maintain that increased movement speed and just never get hit, not even once. Now what we're talking about here is character movement speed in respect to the uh, mob, mob movement speed, the differential between them. So there's certain mobs out in the world like... Uh, boars that are able to sprint there's like specific like hell boars and stuff um i think um tigers and stuff like that there's specific mobs that are actually too fast or it kind of makes it awkward but most mobs are actually quite slow in respect to a hunter that has aspect of the cheetah applied so this means that most elites out in the world that aren't ranged of course that aren't just gonna like shoot you with a bow or cast shadow bolt or something onto you you can pretty much endlessly run in circles and they'll never actually touch you, not even once. So I'm gonna pop up a little clip here as I'm talking about this and you can clearly see this is Morladim out in, uh, I think it's the Raven, something Raven graveyard out in Duskwood. I'm sure you guys know exactly who this elite is. You're doing level 27 quests and there's this level 35 elite skeleton, named skeleton that just comes and kicks your ass every now and then. Well, that guy specifically is quite easy to solo on a hunter once you get high enough level to where you're not just missing every single shot. Now you can see that I'm actually my pet died in this specific battle and I'm straight up just running in circles and he can never catch me and every now and then just giving him a nice auto attack maybe using arcane shots as I go and keeping serpent sting on him so he's ticking down from that dot damage now this is exactly what I'm talking about the movement speed differential between the actual melee mob and the hunter who has aspect of the cheetah applied is is so significant that you can actually just endlessly kite in a circle and you don't you don't have to go on a crazy trek you actually can just use a limited uh, space within the world to just go in circles over and over again so that's pretty much the most simple version that you can use. Um, and you'll see in this one, obviously, like I just stated, I don't have my pet, but it gets a bit more complicated than that. There's certain mobs that have so much HP that if you were to do this, um, it would take a ridiculous amount of time to actually kill just with Serpent Sting and little auto attacks every now and then. There's actually a better method to do this. And also, um, this is a pretty good spot where I can just kind of run in circles. Sometimes you're fighting in a narrow corridor and you're not able to do that. So let's go over exactly what strategy I use when the going gets a little bit more tough. So this next clip, you're gonna see I'm soloing this named rare elite. Um, is one of those gray dragon portrait elites that you find out in the world if you're pretty lucky they, and they have a chance of dropping a green now this guy specifically is a massive rock creature and he hits really really hard so you can't just stick your pet on him and expect your pet to tank and just auto attack him he's gonna crush your pet in a couple hits um, so the alternative I guess is to keep your pet on him and then kite him but how do you maintain aggro off of your pet since your pet's doing so much damage to him while you're barely hitting him and just running around essentially so there's a couple ways to do this now in this one specifically you'll notice that I caught the rare elite within this little narrow corridor in between these two little mountains now as you can see it's kind of an awkward spot to kite and if I was to actually bring him out into a more open area there's a bunch of wolves everywhere and there's those buzzards and everything and it'd kind of be a pain in the ass to just kite him in circles there I'd probably end up aggroing things so the idea was to actually stay within that corridor. Now, how do I kite in circles, basically in loops, 
in a corridor. That's where it gets a little bit more complex. So the trick is really doing what, I, what you're probably seeing on the clip right now. So essentially, you're bringing him to one side of that corridor and then you're gonna peel out to the side, right? And then you'll see I'll cast Concussive Shot to slow the enemy and then loop right around him and then go right back into the corridor and carefully you're trying to get around his hitbox the entire time and then bring him back in the corridor cut him to the other side and then rinse and repeat once you bring him to the other side you'll push him out a little bit concussive shot and then run around his hitbox and then bring him back and you could just do that over and over and over again now that's the technique for endless kiting in a corridor of course when you're actually able to fight a mob that is slowable but the next trick is how do you keep your pet alive or how do you keep your pet from not getting aggro over you when you're pretty much just running around getting a couple auto attacks and serpent stinging. If you're doing little damage like that, your pet is eventually going to pull aggro, the elite mob is going to turn on your pet and then your pet's going to die and then you're stuck, you don't really have damage. The trick is actually distracting shot. So if you see this ability right here, it looks almost like the blink icon for mages. I'm constantly using this over and over again. This is generating threat. So whenever I'm kiting that mob, I'm constantly using this alongside Arcane Shot, alongside Serpent Sting. So that allows me to keep threat off of my pet and constantly keep his attention on me while I'm kiting him endlessly in that corridor and my pet is just behind him, trailing him, hitting him over and over and over again. So that's pretty much the trick. And once you get more comfortable with it, like you'll see at the start of this video, I'm kind of just running away from him, turning around, Serpent Sting is sometimes getting an auto attack. But once you get more comfortable, as I'm demonstrating later on in this video, you can actually um, start strafe kiting a bit more, uh, I guess, aggressively and getting more auto attacks in while back jumping while, with your strafe kiting over and over again and keep getting autos, keep getting autos at a higher rate and you'll do a significant more damage by doing this, but it is more risky and you have to sort of gauge that distance and give yourself enough of a buffer in distance so that once you get to that other side of the corridor, you're able to concussive shot and then pull him around. So that's pretty much the trick. I mean, you're using Serpent Sting, Arcane Shot, and then keeping him on you with your Distraction Shot. And then what you want to be doing that alongside that is using your cooldowns over and over again. So you want to be using your Beast of Wrath every single time it's up because it's actually only a two minute cooldown. So you can keep buffing your pet, keep Distracting Shot, and you'll, your pet will never pull aggro off of you and your pet will just be chomping at his legs. You want to also use Intimidation, which will actually stun him. So every time Intimidation is up, which is once every minute, once you get to the one end of that corridor, you could actually just Intimidation stun and then just run straight through him instead of using the Concussive Shot. Or I guess uh, if you're a PvP or in your higher level, you might actually have Concussive Shot stun spec, which can also work really nice as well alongside that. And you also want to be using Rapid Fire. So Rapid Fire increases your, atta your attack speed with your bow. And then you also have improved aspect of the Hawk, which can proc pretty much the exact same buff. So when you have your attack speed increased by 30%, or maybe they're double stacked, that's when you can really start strafe kiting aggressively and just getting tons of autos as you're strafe kiting back, tons of autos as you're strafe kiting back, and you'll eventually just get the mob down while doing it. Um, so... Another good example of me doing pretty much the exact same thing was actually out in uh, Stranglethorn Vale. I can't remember exactly the name of the mob. I have the clip up here, obviously. But there's that one quest that asks you, asks you to go get the uh, box. I, I can't remember the... Anyways, I'll, I'll put everything on the screen, guys. So this elite mob, and this is the quest item, right? You, that guy is right along the shore, and it's actually super awkward. This is more awkward than that mountainous area out in the Badlands, because you're... you're covered by water and then mountains and just a tiny little beach a little bit of beach and then on each side of on each extremity of the beach it sort of widens up a little bit the beach widens up a little bit and you have to use that space extremely effectively and this mob actually also leashes so you can't run too far he might end up just turning around and running away so I pretty much use the exact same strategy for this guy um, most people do this quest with at least two people sometimes three and again, as a hunter, you could pretty much just do it by yourself, soloing all of these named elites, no problem, out in the, wor out in the world uh, by yourself. So again, for this one, super, super simple. Start at one end of the beach, um, keep Serpent Sting up, Distracting Shot, Beast Giraffe on your pet, let him just go to town on the mob, cast Arcane Shots every now and then if you have enough mana for it, kite to one side of the beach, pull him a little bit out, Concussive Shot, run around his hitbox, 
kite to the other side of the beach, and just rinse and repeat over and over and over again. And of course, always have Aspect of the Cheetah applied and make sure that you don't get hit. Because if you get hit, you get dazed. So that's pretty much it. I mean, these are the techniques that are really important as a hunter. This is the type of stuff that allows you to solo uh, Princess in Maradon. This is the type of stuff that allows you to do uh, the Dire Mall farm. Um, this is the type of stuff that allows you to, <laughs> I guess, kite dragons to Stormwind. You know, this is really, really the core of uh, kiting as a hunter. And when you're entering raids, you're always going to be asked to kite specific mobs. In Zalgarub, for example, a lot of the times on the Bloodlord boss, I think it's Bloodlord Malakir, sorry, I don't know the names, I'm super, I, I should be more prepared for these videos. He rides his Rizashi Raptor, I think, I think it's a Rizashi, sorry. I think it's the Rizashi Raptor, and you basically just pull the Raptor, uh, cast Aspect of the Cheetah, and just run basically to the start of the instance and feign death. So you're always going to have a job. Your role is always going to be do th doing things like that, like General Dracosath at the end of uh, UBRS, and uh, you know there's tons of other examples out there. So understanding how to do this, understanding how to utilize space, understanding the speed differential, understanding how to uh, you know take advantage of distracting shot and your... Um, your spells, um, I mean your spell power shots as in Serpent Sting, Arcane Shot, that's really the core of kiting as a hunter, and I really hope that this one helped you guys out there, maybe you guys aren't aware of this, or maybe you guys are struggling with uh, soloing elites, these are the techniques, this is really what allows you to do it, and I really hope that this helps you, so if you guys uh, like this content, you want to support my channel, make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, of course, you know the drill soldiers, uh, join the Discord, I'm streaming on Twitch, of course, follow me on Twitch, um, and yeah, that's pretty much all I got to say on this one. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.